I'm Megan Kelly, live in New York, and tonight. Breaking tonight, domestic terrorists or patriots? Under fire for his incendiary remarks, Harry Reid doubles down. Domestic violent terrorist wannabes. Senator Reid may call them domestic terrorists, I call patriots. Why is the Senate's top Democrat fanning the flames of a fading fire? Mark Thiessen, Dana Lash, and Dinesh D'Souza live in Nevada for us tonight. And breaking tonight, the most powerful Democrat in the Senate doubling down on calling a Nevada rancher and his supporters domestic terrorists. As a Republican senator demands that someone be held accountable for ordering federal agents to provoke an armed standoff. Welcome to the Kelly File, everyone. I'm Megan Kelly. Right now, rancher Cliven Bundy is holding a rally with hundreds of supporters there. But the showdown between Bundy and the feds is not over. Tonight, Nevada Senators Democrat Harry Reid and Republican Dean Heller getting into it on TV, local TV. Senator Reid doubling down on his allegations that those supporting Mr. Bundy are, in his view, domestic terrorists. Senator Reid, yesterday you called Mr. Bundy and his supporters domestic terrorists. I thought we were trying to calm the situation down, so what did you mean by that? Just what I said. Why, well, um, uh, so talk to me a little bit more about that, Senator, in the sense of what, what triggered the pullout? I mean, what, what you're obviously privy to intelligence. What was it that they were doing up there that would make you call them domestic terrorists? The National Cattlemen Association has a wonderful branch here in Nevada. Um, I met with them last week. They pay their taxes. They pay their fees. They follow the law. Um, Bundy doesn't believe that the American government is valid. He believes the United States is a foreign government. He doesn't pay his taxes. He doesn't follow the law. He doesn't pay his fees. Um, and if anyone thinks by any figment of their imagination, what happened up there last week was just people rallying to somebody that was oppressed. 600 people came in armed. They had they had practiced, they had maneuvered, they knew what they were doing. They set up snipers in strategic locations with sniper rifles. They had assault weapons. They had automatic weapons. And they boasted about the fact that they put women and children, in fact, one retired sheriff from Arizona boasted that he put women and children uh, so that they would get hit first. So um, 600 people. Um, if there were ever an example of people who uh, were domestic, violent, terrorist wannabes, these are the guys. And I think that we should call it that way. We have a situation where uh, I think that it's really untoward. Would it be appropriate if Jim Rogers, owner of this station, got behind in his taxes or had a problem with the Federal Communications Commission to station around here when people tried to collect taxes or to do something? Uh, that was in keeping with the law uh, and surround this place with armed people? Of course not. And remember, not only did Bundy do what I've just said, there are two valid court orders, a permanent injunction, get the cattle off the land, pay your fees. Senator Heller, yeah. are, 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 is the Bundy family, are his supporters, are they domestic terrorists? No, I have a very different view. But no one called Bundy's a domestic terrorist. I said the people that came there okay. were. Okay. Yeah. What, uh, Senator Reid may call them domestic terrorists. I call patriots. We have but, a very different uh, well, view and, on and I said, any, these people think they're patriots. They're not. I use that word typically. If, they, if they're patriots, we're in big trouble. Well, it's a pretty broad brush. Pretty broad brush when you have Boy Scouts there. You have veterans at the event. You have grandparents at the event. And these are people that, uh, as long as they're not promoting violence, in my opinion, in my opinion. Promoting violence with sniper rifles. Talk to Sheriff Gillespie. S automatic weapons that's grandmothers that's boy scouts i hope not because we got a lot we got more problems with boy scouts and whether they can have gay leaders if that's yeah but the i case. take i take more issues with blm coming in with a pair of military um, army of uh, people with individuals with snipers uh, and i'm talking to people in groups that were there at the event and to have uh, your own government uh, with with uh, sniper lenses on you uh, uh, it made a lot of people very uncomfortable right, as Senator Reid stokes the fire, Senator Heller is looking now for accountability from the feds. 
I would like to have hearings. I want to find out who's accountable for this. I hope someone in the BLM feels some accountability on exactly what happened. And I, and I fear that there will be no answer to that question. But I want hearings in Washington, D.C. on exactly what happened and who gave the orders in order to march in like this. Dana Lash is host of Dana on the Blaze TV. Dana, good to see you. And so uh, Senator Reid did not agree to hearings looking into the Fed's conduct in this matter. He's very focused on the so-called domestic terrorists. He made the remark yesterday there was a lot of blowback, a lot of criticism of, about using that kind of term to describe Americans who were trying to stand up on principle. We've, I, I've made clear my own personal view as a lawyer on how, where they stand on the law. Um, and yet today he doubles down on it and and doesn't seem to want any accountability for both sides. Hey, Megan, it absolutely amazes me, and I think Senator Harry Reid forgets that he is not on the Senate floor when he's making these remarks, so he is not allowed to engage in slander, which he's protected when he's on the Senate floor to do. There are so many things wrong with what he said in that audio. I don't even know where to begin. Uh, it, it's, first off, calling these, calling these individuals domestic terrorists. I spoke with Cliven Bundy, and he repeatedly called for peace. He told people, don't wear camouflage. Leave your firearms at home. These individuals didn't come out with fully automatic weapons. If he wants to use that as a definition for who carried what, look at the BLM. These were grandmothers. There were kids here. There were ranch hands. Here's the, here's the contrast in optics, Megan. You had, you had 200 agents. You had helicopters that showed up. You contrast that with, with, uh, contrast that with a number of, of cowboys on horseback, mm -hmm. unarmed, with the American flag waving in the wind as they bowed their head and said a prayer before they met and rounded up these cattle and took them back out to pasture. For Harry Reid to do this, it's reckless. He's trying to incite something. I get the impression, Megan, that he is unhappy with the peaceful resolution and outcome that took place last weekend. And so I have to question why, in this era of new tone, he's using this, what I call, violent rhetoric. Well, it's very interesting. You raise a good point, because he was so silent while the whole thing was going on, and only now that it's over is he as I say stoking the fires why why would as his son yesterday called for things to de-escalate the father Harry Reid is out there saying domestic terrorists domestic terrorists by the way these are live pictures on the left as, at the of the Bundy Ranch tonight where they're holding yeah. this rally tonight but the, but speak Dana if you could to his point because he raises an issue that that does cut against the behavior of the protesters which is their plan according to a sheriff who was there and as it was the sheriff admitted on Fox News to put women and children on the front lines of this showdown because he said mm -hmm. if the feds are going to shoot they're going to shoot the women first and that will look make the feds look bad that I mean to Harry in Harry Reid's defense right that's what has him upset in part about the tactics used and it was one remark made, which was an idiotic remark, and shame on that guy for saying it, because he, he, it, it did a disservice to everyone who was standing out there. And now they gave ground to Senator Reid to sit here and slander the rest of the Bundy family, when Cliven Bundy specifically called for peace. But here's the other thing, Megan. Where was Harry Reid when you had occupiers plotting to blow up a bridge in Cleveland over Cuyahoga Valley? I went out there, and I was talking to individuals out there in Cleveland, and there was no Democrats were still calling. Harry Reid was still calling the Occupy movement a wonderful thing. You had individuals that stormed a port in Cal what I think one was in uh, uh, Oakland, another was in Sacramento. In Oakland, they were doing uh, property damage. If you want to have a discussion on domestic terrorism, there were no shots fired in Nevada. They repeatedly called for peace. And it is a shame that you have a sitting senator who is slandering people and trying to amp up violence. Right. Well, when it's been averted, when it's been successfully averted. Right. Yeah. Dana, it's good to see you. Happy Easter. Thanks, Megan. Happy Easter. So what about that? Why is Harry Reid doing this now that it's basically over? Joining me now for more on the politics of this, Mark Thiessen, a former speechwriter for President George W. Bush and a fellow at the American Enterprise Institute. Mark, good to see you. Why? Good to see he, you, said, he said nothing as the thing was going on. It finally ends. People are happy that it ended without any violence. And now he comes out and uses terms like that? It's it's outrageous, and I mean, think if you think about it, Timothy McVeigh was a was a domestic terrorist. The Unabomber was a domestic terrorist. The Bundys are not domestic terrorists. It's appalling to call them this name. But so why would Harry Reid do something like that? Why would he associate them with Timothy McVeigh and the Unabomber and people like that? And I think there's two a couple of reasons. One, he's defending the Obama administration. If if the people and the, if the Bundys and their supporters are domestic terrorists, then it's not excessive to send 200 pa a paramilitary army of 200. Uh, 
the 200 forces to to shut them down. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's so that gives them a defense. Second, he's defending his staffer Neil Cornsey, who's the new head of the BLM. When Dean Heller says he wants to investigate who made the decision at the BLM to do this, he's talking about about investigating Neil Cornsey. This is a 35-year-old kid who was just confirmed. Many people said that he was too young and not qualified for the job, and and Harry Reid went out and defended him. And then in, within the first few weeks on the job, he orders this paramilitary raid on the on the Bundys. So if if these guys are domestic terrorists, then that's not excessive. He didn't do anything wrong. That's so I think he's trying to defend the administration and his staffer. And it comes out in the wake of him of us seeing video of you know the feds using dogs using tasers sure. on you know folks who were standing out there trying but creating a first amendment zone in the middle of mm -hmm. the range literally instead of rounding up cap cattle they rounded up people and told them they had to stand behind a rope that the feds had designated if they wanted to express their outrage which isn't exactly how we do it here in the united <laughs> states of america so they're on the defensive no, that's exactly right. I mean, I thought America was a First Amendment zone, but I guess we're wrong about that. There's so much that's wrong about how the BLM handled this and the Obama administration handled it. And so this is all now coming under scrutiny. So what he's trying to do is, one, defend them, but two, discredit all the people who are criticizing them. Mm -hmm. Because we're the, the people who are criticizing it are the extremists. If these guys are domestic terrorists, then everybody who's saying this action is excessive, we're the extremists who are associating ourselves with domestic terrorists. And that's mm -hmm. what he's trying to do. He called Tea Party uh, Tea Partiers anarchists, and the Democratic yeah. Party was very effective in hurting the Tea Party and, and diminishing their credibility by repeating that charge and the racist charge and so on. And one wonders whether something similar is now happening here. We're going to talk more about it in just a bit. Mark, thank you. Thanks, Megan. And happy Easter. Uh, just ahead, we're going to go live to the Nevada Ranch, where filmmaker Dinesh D'Souza is joining Clive and Bundy and his supporters. Dinesh, of course, is facing federal charges uh, for campaign contributions, and his case has been held up by some on the right as an example of government trying to intimidate an outspoken critic of this administration. Dinesh sees similarities in this case. We'll talk to him about it, and we'll examine the question of why Harry Reid continuously now is mentioning Clive and Bundy's alleged back taxes that are owed, something that... Clive and Bundy says it's not the case. Where is Mr. Reed getting that information from? We're going live to the Nevada Ranch tonight, actually next, where filmmaker Dinesh D'Souza is at a rally with Clive and Bundy and his supporters. We'll ask him about the latest controversial remarks from Senator Reed, and we'll tell you what the folks are wearing on their chest. Clive and Bundy has not recognized the United States. He, he says that the United States is a foreign government. <clears throat> he doesn't pay his taxes. He doesn't pay his fees. He doesn't pay his taxes. He doesn't follow the law. He doesn't pay his fees. That was Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid, who over the past two days has attacked Nevada rancher Clive and Bundy as a man who not only doesn't pay the grazing fees at issue in this case, but also doesn't pay his taxes. It's a claim that Mr. Bundy rejects and a new one in this dispute, and one that got us wondering how does Mr. Reid know whether Clive and Bundy paid his taxes or not? Dinej D'Souza is producer of the film 2016, Obama's America, and creator of the film America. And he's joining us now from the Bundy Ranch in Nevada. Dinesh, good to see you. Uh, and, and, you know, we don't know how Mr. Reed knows that or why he is now so very focused on going after Mr. Bundy. Your thoughts? Well, it's a very peculiar situation where you have a, a cattleman, a rancher, uh, and he's being taken on directly by the senator and, in fact, the Senate majority leader, who's commenting not only about him not paying taxes, but in some sense accusing his supporters, and I'm right among them here today, uh, of being domestic terrorists. So um, the real question, I think, Megan, I, I came here as a filmmaker to see what's going on. We basically see an American clash, almost like in the old Western movies, uh, between the lone rancher on the one side and I would say the dubious or corrupt politician on the other. And the real question is, who's the real crook? Who's really fanning the flames and tensions? You know, terrorism is when you uh, target innocent civilians, uh, and when you call people domestic terrorists, you're almost implying that they should be targeted and killed. So this is very inflammatory and I think irresponsible rhetoric from Harry Reid, and the people here are very angry about it. I understand that they, they have a little statement uh, that they're making, particularly with respect to Mr. Reid. What is it? 
Well, a, a whole bunch of people here have little name tags, and even the kids are wearing them, just saying, you know, domestic terrorist. And I think it, uh, when you look at a, an all-American kid uh, with, a, with a domestic terrorist sign, you begin to see the preposterousness of what is really going on here. So I think that this is not really about whether Mr. Bundy's paid his taxes or not. This is really about the rule of law and whether this administration is enforcing it even-handedly or whether or not the Obama guys are enforcing the laws they want to enforce and choosing to enforce them against the citizens that they are against. Do you see similarities, Dinesh, between this whole case and your own case? You know, you've been, I mentioned earlier, uh, targeted by the feds, you've, you've been, you're facing prosecution for campaign donations, uh, which many legal analysts have said is a small potatoes type case. They're surprised the feds brought it. Megan, quite honestly, my case is going to trial in May, and I'm preparing for it. But uh, uh, and it's, it's, it's created in me a sense of vulnerability uh, and, of course, a sensitivity to these kinds of issues of justice. But, of course, I didn't have SWAT teams uh, on me. Uh, I wasn't in the sights of snipers. So I feel that, that these guys here have been facing some real domestic terror from their own government. Uh, and that's a very scary idea in America. Tanesh, thank you. Thank you.